Hi, I'm Barry the Beer Guy. Run a website, love old beer cans, and I always answer emails to people uh, with the same answers to their questions about their beer can collections. Whether they had a kid that collected them, they themselves collected them, they had a collection willed to them. I'm here to tell you, if I was there with you sorting through the cans, uh, these are some guidelines I hope help you in sorting through whatever can collection you have. Let's start with the earliest can, uh, <laughs> the latest can. See that? That type of lid, super common. They're what they use today, they're called a stay tab. They stay on the can, pierce the lid in. Aluminum generally, recycle it. Uh, doesn't have a lot of value, there are exceptions, but my time is worth more than the dime or 50 cents these might get on eBay. There are exceptions, of course. but. These are very common, collected in great quantity, because back in the day, the more cans you had, the better collection you had. This is a pull tab can, ring type pull tab. See that? The kind that you tore off the top of the can, throw it on the beach, you'd cut your foot on it. People would put them back in the can, drink it, <coughs> choke, tear their larynx or something. You know, it was terrible. But, <clears throat> so collecting cans in great quantities, these are a huge part of most 70s collections. But you say they've got the intact pull tab on them. Well, that was common to open them from the bottom in the day. They claimed that it would give the can more value or that was the way, but you'd often see collectors in the day or people that drank them and gave them to collectors, open them on the bottom, pour them in there, consume the beer, leave the top intact. But this is a straight steel beer can, see? how before the lid on this type of can, a crimp steel or aluminum, it tapers in before it hits the rim. This one's straight. These are, I don't know, mid 60s to maybe up to 1980 that they made these during the can collecting Hades. A ton of these were made. But now check out some of these. See this top? Look at how this top, see that fan flares out like that, kind of like a tornado. Or compared to that one, check that one out see different opening these are early type pull tabs so grab those out of your collection if you have the funky opening here's another one this is called a zip tab see that one is intact but left on there and open from the bottom but this is called a zip tab beer can these are early type pull tab cans grab those out they're cool variations another zip tab can this is another type of can. Breweries put it out for kids to put their savings and quarters and car wash change into. Bank top can. There's a quart, old Milwaukee, bank top can. The trouble is when you put your change in there, how are you gonna get it out? There's no plug in the bottom. You gotta cut it out. Your can's worthless. Well, it's worth a lot less, so not a real good idea, but these are early cans. Grab them out, they're variations. Next, we get to the can that we have been looking for. See this type? It's on the top. But it took one of these, see that? Church key opener to open them. You had to have one of these if you wanted to drink one of these. These type of cans, earlier. Grab them, punch top, flat top. Here's one in a little better condition, California. See, pierced in there, big, open. Punch top, flat top type cans, grab them. Now we get to the holy grail. The here we go cone top can see bottling lines breweries back in the day could run these metal cans through their existing bottling lines and cap them without investing in a canning machine so these cone top type cans or spout top they kind of resemble you're thinking the old heat can right brake fluid spout top these are the earliest cans and in good shape usually always have value even in bad shape but these are cone or spout type cans started in Oh, 35 and went up to, I think, Hauenstein and New Ulm ran these type cans into the early 60s, maybe 61 or 62. But here is one you want to look out for. It fools a lot of collectors. Made in the mid 70s as a uh, commemorative can. It's got a flat bottom, General Pulaski and Milwaukee Premium, I think. And now uh, there's a Mushroom Days can, but those are maybe 10 bucks. But don't let that be the rule, because here's somebody who's taken, back in the day, a modern well, 70s can and put a concave bottom and a brake fluid type top. So that's one you could be fooled by. Let me tell you, if you're remodeling a house or uh, digging through a crawl space and 
I found some cans, but they're like this. Save them. They're old. There are people that can straighten these out, make them intact and nice. Can you believe that? Yes, it is an art. But save them. And this is what they call a crown tainer. It's a two-piece can. See, it's uh, kind of extruded steel there. And it goes down to the concave bottom. But this, too, was sealed with a cap called a crown tainer type can. Grab those out of the collection. Another one we can cover here is, well, I've got a can that's got a beer and a pop label on it. How novel. Is it very rare and valuable? No, not really. Candy companies used to run those through the uh, lines over noon hour or something or just made them to sell to collectors. They're uh, nothing special. There are a few error can collectors, but uh, not worth any more than the regular can. You know, there's tons of more questions. That's why you should email me or shoot me a picture and let me know what you found. It takes cold beer to discuss old beer. And I'm Barry, oldbeer at gmail.com or ibyoldbeer.com. The Vikings Packers game's getting ready to start here, so I hope that helps in uh, sorting out the more valuable cans or ones that have uh, value. We'll see if this turns out. Take care.